welcome to another biology presentation so right here with me i want us to go through this question four question four reads figure 4.0 below shows the external parts of the human eye so this is figure 4.0 which is showing the external parts of the human eye and this figure is labeled m n and o so question a1 name the parts labeled m and n so they want us to identify the parts labeled m and n so uh, before we write or we identify these two parts we can start by identifying all the parts that are labeled okay so when we look at the part labeled m right here this is the pupil okay so the part labeled m is called the pupil then the part labeled n right here this whitish part is called the sclera okay this is called the sclera then the part labeled o in case they have asked they ask you in an exam this part labeled o right here is called d this is the iris okay this is the, the iris so now we can write the answers here all right so here we have identified the part labeled m we have said this is uh the pupil and the part labeled n this is the the sclera so we have answered our question a1 we now move on to our question a2 all right so we now come to our question a2 right here so this is our question a2 right here explain how n is adapted to its function so part n we have said that is the sclera so how is the sclera adapted to its function so this question was carrying a two marks so we know that uh, the sclera it's the whitish uh, part or it's whitish in color okay so it allows light to be able to reflect okay then it is also made up of tough connective what tissues okay that is how it's adapted to its function so we're going to write all right so we have said uh, part n is whitish in color allowing it to reflect light and it is made up of tough connective tissues so this is how we are going to get these two two marks so we now come to our question b right here so our question b reads describe the role played by m and o when a person moves to a room with dim light all right so on uh, question b they want us to describe the role that is played by m and m we know that this is the pupil and the role played by o which is the iris okay when a person moves to a room with dim light so um, um when we move to a, a place where there is dim light meaning that we have gone to a place where there is low light intensity okay so if go to a place where there is low light intensity what happens to the pupil and what happens to the to the iris these are the questions they want us to answer all right so what will happen is that when we move to a uh, a room where there is low light intensity or to a uh, a room where there is dim light the pupil becomes bigger okay meaning that the pupil dilates okay it dilates or it becomes bigger in order to allow more light to pass through okay then what will happen to the iris okay the iris here we find that the radial muscles they are going to contract while the circular muscles they are going to relax meaning that these muscles will work in e antagonistic when we move into the uh, a room with the dim light with low light intensity so that is just the opposite if they ask you now what to happen to the iris and the pupil if a person moves to a room where there is more light intensity all right so here we have said what to happen to part m and o when a person moves to a room where there is uh, dim light part m which is the pupil is going to direct or it becomes bigger in order to allow more more light to enter it okay then part o which is the iris there which has uh, which has got these muscles the radial muscles and the the circular muscles so when you go into the dim light where there is low light intensity 
the radial muscles they are going to contract while the circular muscles they are going to to relax okay so these are the answers to this question b we now come to our question c right here and our question c reads explain the cause of short-sightedness and how it can be corrected okay so we have the cause and the correction so what is the cause of uh, short sightedness so short sightedness is caused by having an abnormal uh, large eyeball okay having an abnormal large eyeball this can cause a uh, short sighted what lens okay i've said short sightedness is caused by having so cause you say having an abnormal large eyeball or we can say by having a natural thick what thick lens then when you look at the correction how can it be corrected so uh, short sightedness can only be corrected by um, by using a concave what lens by using a concave lens okay but when it comes to long sight it can be corrected by using a convex lens so these are points that you need to pay attention to okay so let's see we have said all right so here we have said the causes of short sightedness is by having an abnormally large eyeball okay so this will cause uh, people to have this short sightedness um soda or by having a natural thick what lens okay by having a natural thick lens this can also be one of the causes of short sightedness now what is the correction so for the correction we have said by using okay we have said by using a concave lens by using a concave lens this can be corrected okay by using a concave lens all right i've come to the end of our presentation so thank you so much everybody for having time to view this content this has been your presenter mr mlenga bye bye